Good morning, Your Honor. Michael Meade on behalf of the defendant. The defendant is present with me this morning in the courtroom. Good morning. Is this from the 930? The bench trial. Jose DiCastro. Uh, Are the officer present? No, Your Honor. We filed a motion to continue. Oh, I see it. Put Mr. Uh, Miss Miss Jefferson filed a motion. She put Mr. Me on notice of this on November 29th. So we're asking to reset the trial based on the motion that we filed. Did you receive a copy of the motion? Your Honor, I have a copy of the motion. If I could be heard on that. Yep. So it looks to me that the, the subpoena referenced in, in the affidavit was not timely submitted. Uh, Ten days prior to this date. Beyond that, Your Honor, all the information that we have today is that the officer is currently on leave under the Family Medical Leave Act, but there's no information about whether he's in this jurisdiction or out of this jurisdiction, if this is a medical issue. Um, for the witness to be absent for the purposes of Hill, there either has to be an absence from the jurisdiction or a medical issue. Now, this might imply one of those situations exists, but I have no information one way or the other uh, to confirm if that's the case. Just because he's on leave, he can be leave, on leave within this jurisdiction and able to appear. So there's not enough information in the affidavit to grant the, the motion to continue. Um, I'll submit on that ground. Thank you. So there is no there is no 10 day service of subpoena requirement for Hill. That's that's not a part of the Hill case. In fact, the Hill case doesn't actually even require service of a subpoena. It's a due diligence um, showing by the state that they exercise exercise their due diligence in, in attempting to acquire the witness. The information from the officer was that he's. Um, gone on the Family Medical Leave Act and is unable to appear in court. I know that there are, I don't, I don't know the specifics, but I know that there are rules in terms of what someone can or can't do um, when they are on uh, FMLA leave. And so that's the information we were given. Um, we're asking the court to continue this matter um, until uh, after January 2nd, when, when the witness is no longer on FMLA leave. Uh, we're not asking for some crazy amount of time. It's a it's a it's a reasonable request. The defendant's the other the other consideration is that the defendant's out of custody, and there's no real prejudice to the defendant by granting this motion to continue until January second. If he was in custody, obviously that'd be different. But um, I'd ask the court grant the motion based on the um, submission by the state. I was not here on November thirtieth, but the minutes say that the state represented that they will be filing the whole motion to continue the bench trial as the lead officer is unavailable. So I think you were aware of that on November 30th? I was aware of that. The motion had not been filed sure. all that time, but it was discussed at that hearing, yes, Your Honor. So it was actually filed that morning, later in the morning. So I, the state has met their burden under the Hill case. I will grant the motion to continue. I will set it on the date in January after which the officer is available. And I'm happy to set it at the convenience of both parties. Um, Your Honor, if it is going to be January, my availability later later in the month would be better. Later in the month yes. would be better? More towards the end of January? Yes, Your Honor. All right, how about January 23rd at 9.30? That works for the defense, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. January 23rd, 9.30. Out.